Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we have this HP Thin Client. This is a HP T520. These usually go for around $40 online. This was only $10 plus shipping. So I really felt like I should buy this one since this is something I've wanted for a while. It also included the power adapter, which is nice since they usually don't include that. This model was released in 2014 and actually does have a UEFI BIOS, which, you know, that means it's not, it's not that old. On the front, we have a power button, a hard drive indicator, two USB 3 ports, microphone and headphone jacks. On the back, we have Kensington lock, power input, four USB 2 ports, VGA, two display outs, and Ethernet. This is where the screws are supposed to go, but they weren't included in this one. So to take it apart, you just slide it apart like that. Taking a look at the inside, on the opposite side of this, we have the AMD GX121JC dual core system on a chip uh, processor with uh, built-in graphics. We have a single four gigabyte RAM stick, but this can go up to eight gigabytes, surprisingly. And down here we have an SSD and a Wi-Fi adapter. The Wi-Fi adapter or the little Wi-Fi card is from a laptop I had, and I kind of rigged the antennas inside of here uh, just because this didn't have Wi-Fi. And the SSD I also bought. So that's probably why the screws weren't in it anymore, just because they quick took the SSD out and slapped it back together and threw it up on eBay. Taking a look here, we have a standard CR2032 backup battery for the date and time and BIOS settings. And we also have a CMOS uh, reset button, which is really nice to see. And on the top, we have a heat sink, which actually looks a bit like an ISA slot from a distance. And this thing just barely gets warm under heavy load, which is awesome. Apparently this thing only consumes six watts of power. And what I have installed on the SSD right now is HP ThinPro OS. You can download some factory images from a tool called HP Thin Update. You can install it on your computer. And this is one of the options. So there's not a whole lot you can do since this is just meant for connecting to other computers to use through this since it's, you know, a thin client. Uh, there is a web browser. And this is based on Ubuntu Linux but it's very stripped down. There is not much you can do with this at all. Yeah, as you can see, it's slowly loading in this web page. Firefox 60. So this is starting to get a little out of date. I don't see any sections in here where you can run updates. So anyways, what I have on this USB is Windows Embedded Standard 7, which is one of the options from HP you can download. So I wanna go ahead and install this on the thin client for this video. So let's go ahead and plug in the USB drive. And I don't think much will show up on Linux here. As you can see, it's booting up and it looks like it's gonna be Windows 10, but it's not because this is using the Windows 10, the Windows 10 Windows PE. So basically the Windows 10 installer to install Windows 7. HP Thin Client Imaging Tool. This utility will format your flash disk and erase all data currently on the disk. Do you wanna continue? Absolutely. So as you can see, we got this error here, initializing error. The system does not have license for the OS image and it gave us an error code. And I looked that up and I did some research and I found out that this is only a Linux thin client. So there's no proper key to run this restore tool from HP, which is really unfortunate. I wasn't planning on using it anyways, but I was really hoping to look through the software and stuff that they had installed. So let's go ahead and install what I originally wanted to install on this. And here we are starting the setup of Windows 10 LTSC 22H2. I feel like this will be a good operating system for this since I can run full Windows apps and yet it still has support, but it's Windows 10 LTSC, so it won't have the app store, which is also a bonus for this thing. And it'll get support until 2032 because it's the internet of things version, the IOT. And let's go ahead and clear out our SSD of partitions. And here we are starting Windows 10 setup on this thin client. Something that I'm interested to see is the CPU usage while it's installing. So let's go to shift F10 and then we'll type in task MGR for a task manager. Yeah, it's staying over 50%, which most computers don't. But again, this is a very low powered computer. It's kind of neat that we can see that while it's installing. 
So I installed all the drivers and updates as well as a few programs and I'm just going to give a quick demo on how this performs on Windows 10. So we have the task manager here. It's not working too hard right now. So let's go ahead and open up CPU Z. And if you look here, it does actually support SSE 4.2. So you could run the latest build of Windows 11 on here, which is pretty cool. But I don't really see a need to, at least yet. Windows 10 works plenty good on here. The memory, it shows it's single channel, 4 gigabytes. And the graphics apparently uses up 512 megabytes of the RAM. One thing I'm curious is the speed of the SSD in this. Since the processor is the bottleneck, I wonder if the SSD is still pretty decent. I'm just going to run 128 megabytes through this one test here. As you can see, it's about 300 megabytes read and write, which isn't too bad, but I think the SATA SSD should go up to 500 megabytes, so it might not be taking full advantage of it. Anyways, let's try a few games on here. Here I have Classic Cube, which is a remake of Minecraft Classic, and unsurprisingly, that runs great on here. The settings are turned all the way up and we're getting over 100 FPS. Not too bad. Another game I have copied over to here is Gary's Mod. It's a pretty old game, so it shouldn't be too hard to run. It runs about as well as it probably did back in the day when it was a new game on current systems then. So the experience isn't bad. This is on medium settings. There's a little bit of screen tearing, but Otherwise, it's pretty playable. One last game I'm going to try here is BeamNG, but this is actually the tech demo from 2015, so it's pretty old. And I have the settings absolutely dumped to the lowest, including the resolution. So it's, I think it's 640 by 480. I'll be surprised if this is anywhere close to playable. So let's see how this runs on here. I'm pushing forward now. It's choppy for sure, but I expected worse. One thing I forgot to mention, and I'm a little confused now because of it, there's this little thing that slides out that tells you information about the thin client. And if I were to keep on pulling it out, it would show a Windows product key. I'm not too sure why this wouldn't install. It's either one of two things. First, I think it could be the image I downloaded is corrupted and it just couldn't see the key in the BIOS. Or second, this might be a cover off of one that ran Windows uh, because they were removing the SSDs and stuff. They probably just put them all back together and they probably didn't even pay attention to uh, what covers came off of what, which thin clients. So that could be a possibility too. So that'll do it for this video. I mainly wanted to see if Windows would install and get all the drivers on this and thankfully it did. I might try Windows 7 since that doesn't work as well as Windows 10 does with finding drivers and stuff, but I think it should work too. The only things I had to install was graphics and the USB 3 ports on the front. But this thin client will have a purpose for some future videos, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye.